Oh wow. That was uh, War Games Oh wow, I have reverb on that. Well I guess yeah when I shout like that. Oh Oh wait, there's one reason why I have reverb. Oh folks, welcome again to War Games Review. I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom. And I have some shout outs to give. Nicholas Gross Kurth. Yeah, I got that right. Thank you for your, your unhappy face. But yeah, the Go Home Show was kind of meh. I, even though I thought it was more blah. You, sir, for your comment, though, get this six count. And Jay Tay, yep. Yeah, there's nothing you can do about pizza sometimes. That's why I only go there every so often when they have a 50% off pizza sale. And that's about all it's good for. You, sir, however, are a master of playing the air guitar.
Aye, because it is Saturday night. Master of this. Mm. So delicious. The Jägermeister and Coca-Cola. Well, enough about that stuff. All the pleasantries aside. It's time to talk about War Games! I'll tell you what. I did pretty good, except for... I don't know if it was an opening match or if they're going to have it tomorrow. Oh. Well, I'll get to that later. But I was 2 out of 4. And this is weird, because I think it started at 7. Ended at 9.30. I got my bonus right. I got my Stone Cold Lock right. Therefore, I'm inside the head of one Stephanie McMahon. Actually, I'm not doing too bad. We'll see what happens tomorrow. And, and, and just wait till what I have to say about that. I need to put Steph head. Steph head. Steph head. So let's get into it. Let's talk about war games. Um, started off with the women's war games. Um, for the most part, it was the faces versus the heels. You had the faces being Rhea Ripley. Oh, wait a second. Wait, who was the face? Yeah, Rhea Ripley, I'm sorry. Candice LeRae, Tegan Knox, and Dakota Kai? Taking on Shanna Baszler, Kaylee Ray, Io Shirai, and Bianca Belair. That's right, I just wrote them down in the wrong order, but that's okay. Um... This was actually pretty interesting. What did I put there? Oh, Io, uh, so it starts off Io Shirai and Candice LeRae. Candice LeRae start the match. Io Shirai just beats up Candice LeRae. And Candice is dropped face first onto the steel plate. Candice LeRae had a bleed in this match. And I think that's the one thing that I'm semi disappointed about. This is War Games! And there was no blood. I mean, if you're going to have a steel cage, I think one of the men just kind of like cut themselves a little bit, but it wasn't anything. It wasn't no, no juice, baby. It wasn't no John Moxley match. It wasn't no Cody Rhodes match either. Yeah, that was like, I was shocked. Candice LeRae, I figured, would bleed. Um, and then, so she dropped face for X. Bianca Belair is next in. I wonder how they choose. Or let the faces get the next, or heels get the next person in. Then I guess the faces get to come in at the end. So I guess it balances out at the end. I don't know. Uh, Bianca Bell 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 gets in next. Poor Candace, she just gets beat up. And then Rhea Ripley, and she just starts throwing like like garbage cans in the ring, chairs in the ring, kendo sticks. I thought kendo sticks were weapons. Wow. I understand why chairs would be there. I understand why garbage cans would be there. But kendo sticks. Kendo sticks! Um, no tables, though. I think they were saving that. So after Rhea Ripley gets in, um, kind of saves Candice LeRae a little bit, uh, Kylie Ray comes in, and they still beat up Candice LeRae a lot. <laughs> and Candice, I'll tell you what, they did a Tower of Doom spot from like Pro Wrestling Gorilla. I think Candace died. Poor, poor, poor Candace Gargano. Poor Johnny Gargano. His, his wife's coming home a winner, but but not really though. Uh, then Dakota Kai's turn. And oh, here we go. I picked it correctly. Dakota Kai was invited in because Mia Yim got beat up. And Dakota Kai turns on Tegan Knox. I knew it was going to happen. 
I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I picked something right. Um, so when it's the Kodakai's turn to go in, she just kills Tegan Knox. And by the way, folks, Tegan Knox, whenever she comes out as part of a ring gear, she should wear her glasses. She looks so much cuter with her glasses on. I don't know. I don't know what, what the deal is with that. But yeah, Dakota Kai turns on Tegan Knox, destroys her knees. Even Regal stops in. Stop it. Stop it, Dakota Kai. You cannot continue in this. You, you have to go back. Poor Tegan Knox. How could you do this to your partner? I have to go have, have, a, have a sip of tea now. So aggravated. So then when she. And when Shane is trying to get, go in, she just like laughs and takes her time. She's like, <laughs> there's four versus two. And yeah, I'm going to lower it because of that. I'll tell you what, this was uh, an amazing match. Once it actually got started, once all the participants were in the ring or de or out of action or, or tossed out by Lord Steven Regal. Um, Shane is the best. Uh, Kylie Ray, she just picked up the. Oh, she took a rough spot, folks. I don't know what you would call it, but she gets like. I think. Like reverse suplexed outside of the ring, but the way she landed, her, her whole ass got raked by the, by the cage. That was kind of funny. I could have. It's like I don't know what she wears, but she she wears some tough material though. Because if if something of that material caught that cage, one she she would be cut, and two we would see all of Kaylee Ray. I shall leave it as because it was kind of fun. Uh, yeah yeah. Um, we had the, the double submission. Uh, who had who and what? Let's see here. It was. I want to say Rhea Ripley had Io Shirai in a hold and Shayna Baszler had Candice LeRae in a hold. So that was kind of confusing. Uh, Candice LeRae eats a garbage can to the face. I don't know. I don't, I have um, Io was on top. She did her awesome moonsault on Candice and poor Bianca Belair. And there was, then somehow Candice had a super reverse Rana. Uh, Rhea Ripley hit the, the Riptide onto Shayna and the four other women couldn't make the save. And I'll tell you what, overall it was a fun thing. It'll be interesting where they go with Dakota Kai because Dakota Kai I think is only 20-something but now she looks like she's 40 all of a sudden. I don't know what happened here. But I mean, Tegan Knox, Nixon Newell, the girl with the shiniest wizard, still amazing. But uh, the face is actually one. I was shocked I got that wrong. I, especially if it's going to be a four on two advantage. Wait a second. Four is greater than two. Four should win. But no, because two are faces. Faces won, I guess, and had the crowd happy. But I called it the Dakota Kai turn. So we'll see well, we'll see what happens in future NXT events here in Daytona Beach. I forget when the next one's going to be. But we'll find out. I guess I'll hear through the grapevine. I don't know. NXT on TV just doesn't do it for me. I don't know. Again, it's just my own thing. So, yeah, I'm going to downgrade it. Again, four takes on two. Four Garbage cans, chairs. Kendo, I don't even think. Oh, yeah, the Kendo sticks to get involved a little bit. This was a good match. Again, the whole four on two idea. The math doesn't work for me. It's a good cheeseburger match, though. Then we go on, we have Damian Priest taking on Peter Dune, taking on Killian Dane. Um, 
and I'll, I'll talk about this a little bit after I show you guys some clips of it.
Ha! I got you, Marks. No, that was from when these three individuals were practicing their whole routine here in Daytona Beach. I just wanted to see who I could get with that clickbait or who, who I could tempt with that. But yeah, uh, match the so, so the real match starts off a bunch of marks. You all are <laughs> the set last week. <laughs> um, so so this match starts off. They start throwing kicks. Everyone misses. Um, Pete Dunn goes to the outside. So that leaves uh, Killian Dane and Damian Priest. And then eventually Killian Dane goes to the outside, leaving Peter Dune and Damian Priest. Again, it's kind of the classic format where, for the most part, it's really two on two with one person on the outside. Um, uh, Peter Dune does the joint manipulation. Damian Priest is heavy on strikes. And he likes to do that Razor as Edge now, too. Uh, Killian Dane Samoa dropped. I want to say Damian Priest, and then while he was, he had Damian Priest on his back. He held Peter Dune, so he ragdolled Peter Dune and did the uh, Samoan drop to Damian Priest, which was a pretty cool spot on the outside. Um, yeah, Dune Samoan drop and ragdoll slammed to Damian Priest. Uh, Peter Dune got double team power bomb. Then for a short second, there was a little cooperation between Killian Dane and Damian Priest. Did not last long though. And oh, that Scottish headbutt. Uh, and then <laughs> Killian Dane said something he shouldn't have said. They're going to have to say, shame on you, Killian Dane. You have to apologize to people for actually. They deleted. They they beeped it out too of the of the pay per view, which is weird because it's a pay per view, not network TV. Um, then again, the Razor's Edge onto the table. The ta uh, Peter Dune went went on the table, but the table no sells. Table still is there. Uh, Peter Dunn does a moonsault after Damian Priest did a dive. Anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Uh, then Killian Dane hit the one wing angel. There was a, a breakup of that. Peter Dune hit a superplex on Killian Dane. I think that was pretty impressive. Um, Peter Dune went over, which is what I predicted. Honestly, though, their match in Daytona Beach was better, I think. It's just a cheeseburger match. And we have Finn Balor versus Matt Riddle. And for the most part, this is actually kind of fun. Um, a very collegiate, collegiate start. I like that when they do collegiate wrestling. That was not catch as catch kind of wrestling, which is pretty good. And then Finn got vicious. Ooh, I wanted to see Prince Devitt. He didn't get quite the Prince Devitt levels though. Um, it, was a, it was a hard hit hitting match <laughs> with some of those phantom kicks. They really have to do a little bit better job than that. And I know they have to work safe. When I can tell it's a phantom kick, you know, it's pretty bad, though. And then Matt Riddle, he stole Goldberg's moves after a bunch of back and forth. Uh, a couple ankle lock attempts by Matt Riddle. He went for the spear and the jackhammer. He stole those from Goldberg. Goldberg. Uh, Finn Balor eventually gets two... He gets one nineteen sixteen goes for a double stomp misses. Um, they wrestle a little bit more. Uh, Finn Balor hits his second nineteen sixteen after he got out of the bro mission, which is a twister. And Finn Balor wins. Finn Balor is the best, although Prince Devitt's probably better. And I, I don't know, it was. This match followed the women's match, which was, which was good, except for the four on the four on two is is, is kind of wonky. Uh, 
the triple threat match, they had a better match live here in Daytona Beach. This was, it just felt like a match. A good match. The cheeseburger match. Then we had War Games! Again. So now we have the men's war games. It was the undisputed era. Taking on Team Ciampa. And Team Ciampa comprised of Keith Lee, Dominic Dijakovic, Dijakovic can't tell. and Tommaso Ciampa. And was that going to be it? Because those were the only three locked in the cage. Um, starts off, Ciampa goes right to the ring with a crutch. Uh, Roddy Strong says, I'll go in there. Roddy Strong is very tempted to get in the ring. However, Ciampa does have his crutch, one of his favorite weapons. And then Ciampa says, here, you can use my crutch. And Roddy Strong gets in the ring. He says, I don't need your crunch. I don't need your, 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 your crutch. Uh, Ciampa just beats up Roddy Strong. Ciampa's best. Nico killer, Tommaso Ciampa. Uh, then it was more cursing. Oh, I still don't know why they're deleting the cursing from pay-per-view style. Again, why do the heels get to go first? And something of Matt. I'll figure it out later. Uh, then there was then Kyle O'Reilly gets in. Uh, you can hear Fish talking from his cage, though. Bobby Fish is the best talker. He has to teach, um, what is it? Promo, uh, three the three promo promo three hundred or or the third promo or promo three, because he's so good. You can hear him throughout the entire stadium, and you don't hear his spots either. You just hear his trash talk, which is good. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly comes in. Chomp, chomp a tried. Against two on one, uh, great double teams. Uh, Bejakovic's next. Clean house again, as you expected the fresh face would do. Bobby Page comes in and he just beats on everyone. He's so fun to watch. Uh, then, oh, Baskin is glory. Oh, Baskin is glory. Keith Lee comes in, he, he cleans house. He didn't pounce anyone, though. He just he just really shoulder tackled, does the headbutt, just the double chops, which was fun. Um, <laughs> and then, Adam Cole, baby! Boom! Comes in, and he just starts throwing tables in the ring. Technically, it hasn't started yet, because it's only still four on three. Actually, for that matter, the women's match could have never technically started. Because Tegan Knox never made it to the ring. Nor did Dakota Kai. Wait a second. There's another flaw in that match. Very good flaw. Uh, so, he, Adam Cole, baby! Starts throwing tables into the ring. So many tables. It was different. At least he didn't repeat what the women did. He started setting up tables. However, Adam Cole does not know the rule of tables in the WWE. The rule of tables in the WWE goes, if you set up the tables, you go through said tables. Uh, so it's four and three until da -da 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 -da. Kevin Owens shows up and the place erupts. Adam, Adam Cole's just like, huh? Kevin Owens comes to ringside, beats up everyone. War Games! Officially begins. Um, Kevin Owens just cleans house. That was so awesome. And then he hit a stunner on Adam Cole, and Adam Cole sold that more so than man could ever sell a Stone Cold stunner. That was an amazing sell. Uh, again, Kevin Owens just talking the whole time. It was so much fun. Uh, Adam Cole sold that book. And it felt like, really, for the most part, Ring of Honor, uh, Pro Wrestling Guerrilla, Chikara all over again, which is probably what the WWE needs, especially NXT. They need a little oomph. 
then what else happened? You know, I'm going to bump this. Ma yeah. Oh, I did bump it up. So that's good. Uh, Kevin Owens eventually get, gets gets beat up. Heels always have their turn. Uh, they hit the uh, Kyle Riley and Bobby Fish. Hit total elimination on Keith Lee. Uh, Donovan Di uh, Dominic Dijakovic got a lung blower from the second rope. Adam Cole, baby! Hit a Panama Sunrise onto the hard steel part. Between the rings, uh, Kevin Owens was key, was teasing a package of pile driver, which would have been amazing. And I think that sometimes some wrestler kind of incidentally cut themselves as a ref on the gloves. Although I could have sworn that one of the refs gave Roddy Strong a blade or something, because that was like some ref like just checking on him very suspiciously at, when he was along the ringside. So. I don't, I don't see what happened. Um, so again, there's a brawl between the three men. Kyle Riley, Bobby Fish, Roderick Strong uh, wind up taking up or beating up Kevin Owens, Don, uh, Dominic Dijakovic, uh, Keith Lee. Eventually, all the members of the Undisputed Era go through the tables they set up. They need to know the rule of tables. And then at the top of the cage, it was Adam Cole, baby, and the psycho killer, not Gargano, but Ciampa, fighting it out. And let's see here. Oh, I really froze. And so you have at the top of the cage um, Ciampa and Adam Cole, baby! Fighting it out. And wow! They started to punch each other. It was like a tease of like a Canadian story from the top of the cage. Please don't die. Please don't die. Please don't die. But Tommaso Ciampa hit a top of the cage air raid on Adam Cole. Baby. Boom. And I'll tell you what. And I know it looked like Tommaso Ciampa kind of looked over at him and said, are you okay? And <laughs> Adam Cole probably said, uh, maybe. But I'll tell you what. It just looked like Adam Cole was dead to the world. Hey, Britt Baker. You might not have a boyfriend anymore. He, he might be dead. I'm single, Britt Baker. And I live in Florida, too. Hit me up. Now they did an ounce. They did not show, however, and I would have paid money to see Britt Baker, an AEW wrestler, at an NXT event. Ooh, I don't think Tony Khan knew about that. I don't think Tony Khan's going to be happy about that. Hey, Britt Baker. Impact Wrestling is a pretty good women's division. <laughs> or she could always join Adam Cole Bay Bay. Boom. Maybe. At NXT. Shocking. If that does happen, remember you heard it from me first, folks. This, I'll tell you what. This was a filet mignon match. People in the Discord group says that this was an overbooked mess. Yes, but it's war games. And my only fear is that 
they're going to keep on doing this and it's get going to get to the point like Hell in a Cell was a couple of years ago where it's like, eh, that's another wrestling match. It's just a bigger steel cage. So it would be nice if they kind of retired War Games for a year or two. That way it kind of feels fresh. Again, um, AEW is bringing back Bash of the Beach. The one Bash of the Beach that I saw on TBS was when uh, Hogan turned and he just got garbage thrown at him. And that was utterly amazing. And then they did it every so often and they stopped it. It's one of those things that has a magical property if they do it right. And in fact, I was talking to a friend at the gym and we both came up with an amazing batch of the beach idea. So just, I know this isn't part of war games, but just, but just hear me out. And Hey, Paul Levesque, if you're listening, all I want is $10,000. And you'll make millions. So here's my idea. You have here in Daytona Beach, you have the racetrack, which does kind of nothing except for about five to seven weeks out of the year. Have Survivor Series here in Daytona Beach. And this is how you have Survivor Series. It sounds super gimmick. But you do the World War Three style. So instead of just two rings, you have three rings. And say each brand starts off in their own ring. Good so far, right? Again, you can put them on wheels a little bit, a little bit if you need to. Um, you have the whole grandstand for seating area, which is a lot. I want to say the grandstand sits about. 60,000 ish. You can have, of course, chairs on the floor, so there's more. The kicker is now you can actually charge more for people that want to bring their RVs in and can actually watch the wrestling matches on top of their RVs in the infield. That would probably be another two to three thousand dollars. So again, you can charge again for the spot, and then you make money off of again food, uh, waste removal, water, go kart rentals. Hey, you know what? You could have John C C John Cena show up in his own RV, and that could be an attraction in itself. So right there. You have a stadium that, say, fits 70,000, which is on par to really most football stadiums. Once you put in the, the floor seating, you have, so you have 70,000 seats. RV, you have, for the most part, Daytona Beach has the infrastructure to get people in and out really quick. I mean... The whole lead up to the races suck. But I want to say everyone gets out and on to 95, like really 45 minutes right after like the la right after like the whole fireworks show. And then some people leave beforehand. So they have infrastructure because you can leave either on 92, uh, Mason, Granada, or Dunlawton. They have like 40 parking lots. They have the bus system. So 70,000 RV infrastructure. The lots. The buses. Most of the wrestlers live in the area. Orlando, Tampa. Um, I think a couple in Ponte Vedra. Or Jacksonville. I mean, even Panama City, Pensacola is not that far away. Tampa is honestly a two and a half hour drive. The wrestlers could literally stay at their house 
and then you can like literally like super tour bus them in. And even from Orlando, at most, it's an hour and a half bus ride. Really? Uh, Tampa, it's about three, three and a half hour drive. So it's fairly convenient. They don't have to fly anywhere. I know the race car people, they rent out like whole condos along the beachside. Hey. That would be pretty cool. Well, Matt and I want to see Love Morgan in a bikini. You didn't hear me say that. But again, that's kind of my, my sidetracked idea. Um, so that was War Games. Ah, it was good. It just wasn't as good as I expected it to be. I mean, the bar is set so high. And when you start to do unrealistic things like 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 two people beating up four, if two matches which just which were really good NXT matches, but that's it didn't feel like a takeover match. With and the only thing that felt like a, a, a real spectacle was the men's war games. I'll say overall it was a cheeseburger war games. And that was it. Again, uh, feel free to comment. If you, if you think I'm close, you can say, you're spot on. You see, I know a lot, a lot of people thoroughly enjoyed the woman women's match. Again, the math is kind of wonky. Um, you can always critique me about that. And I'd love to hear from you. Again, you can always feel free to email, leave a comment. Oh, like, share, and subscribe, too. And then in... Oh, wow. So happy. Seven more days, I guess, a live stream. Again, that's going to feel so good. Um, so that's it for me. And everyone have a good night. And remember, folks, if you are going to partake of adult beverages such as me, don't forget to either get a designated driver, there's Uber, Lyft, old-fashioned taxis, or if it's early enough, public transportation like buses. Don't drink and drive. Other than that, I want to have a good night, and I'll see you tomorrow for Survivor Series. Bye!